Okay, so this is module 41, the open economy. Uh, the last, uh, not the last unit we're going to talk about economic growth, but um, the last important part of our um, GDP equation, uh, the influx of other countries on our economy. So the balance of trade. We've talked about this a number of times. Net exports is exports minus imports. Okay, what we send out minus what we take in, um, and that gives us our net exports. Okay, if we have a trade surplus, that means we export more than we import, and of course, if we export less than we import, we would have a trade deficit. And so, you can take a look here, and this looks at what our trade. Uh, surplus or deficit is with each uh, country and each region, right? So we have a big deficit with the Asian countries here, China, Japan, South Korea, and India. Um, we have a slight um, surplus with uh, the Eurozone, and Mexico is basically, and the NAFTA countries are, we're right about even. But this gives you an idea of where our goods go and where we get our goods from. So let's look at the balance of payments. This is something a little bit different, but it's definitely uh, worth knowing. This is not strictly economics. This is a little bit more closely related to accounting, but it is something that's important to understand. So balance of trade includes only goods and services. Balance of payments includes all international transactions. Right? So there are things that countries interact with each other, but that are not goods and services. There could be assets, there could be real estate. So all of those are included in the balance of payments. Okay, So it's all of a country's international trade, not just goods and services. Right, Money coming in, inflows, are credits to our account. Anything going out of the country, outflows, would be considered a debt. Okay, or a debit, right? Money leaving, right? And so when we talk about the balance of payments for a country, we're talking about that country's currency. So when we talk about the balance of payments for the United States, we're talking about dollars. What is our balance in terms of our currency, our dollars? Okay, there are two accounts uh, that we talk about, the current account and the financial account. The financial account at one point was also called the capital account. I think they're phasing that out. If you do see the word capital account, understand that it's talking about the financial account. Okay. And then there's a third part. We're not going to talk a whole lot about it. These are the official reserves. And in case there's a discrepancy, countries can pull from their official reserves because the balance of payments must always equal zero. The current account and the financial account, when they come together, must equal zero. That's why it's called balance of payments. So money going out must equal money coming in, of course, and vice versa. All right, so let's look at the current account. The current account has three parts. The first part are net exports. We've talked a lot about this. These are goods and services. This is the largest part of the current account. If we have a trade deficit, if we're bringing in more things than we're sending out, we would also have a current account deficit, okay? A trade deficit is the same thing as a current account deficit. Net foreign income, investment income. This is the assets that the U.S. owns that pay income. So if we have money factories abroad and money from there comes into our country, that would be part of the current account. Interest payments on loans, uh, things like that, are all part of the current account. Um, also, foreign earnings on money here, right? If Japan has a factory here and they send Japan money, that would be a debit. That would be money going out of the country. So money coming in, again, is a credit. Money going out is a debit. And so this is factories by other countries here that earn money, investments that earn money, and then investments overseas that earn money, and that money comes back here. And then foreign aid. 
net transfers. This is money that we send to foreign countries. It could be from our government. We give aid to different countries. It could be that, you know, you send money to a relative in Poland, for example, uh, or you send money to a relative in Brazil or whatever, right? Any money that leaves the country would be part of the current account. A key, and this is just a nice rule of thumb, things that go out of the country, that go to the place they were bought or go to a place where they're needed are all part of the current account. So if we send hats to another country, that's current account. If we send money to another country, that's leaving, right? Anything that travels out of the United States or into the United States out of their country is part of the current account. Now let's look at the financial account. Formerly called the capital account, as I said, it's being phased out, but you might see it referred to capital account every so often. So what's part of the capital account? Real assets. Buildings, factories, assembly lines, things that cannot be transported, things that are fixed in their country, okay? But they continue to earn money, right? And so these will all be part of the financial account. So maybe a building that you get rent on, things like that. Financial assets, stocks, bonds, etc. These are part of the financial account. If you buy stocks in a Japanese company in the Japanese stock market, that would be part of the financial account. Again, a rule of thumb for that financial account, things that stay where they were bought are part of the financial account. So if I buy stocks in a Japanese company, right, I'm not taking that company with me. That is earning there. I can obviously bring the stock home, but the business stays there. If I buy a building in another country, I'm not taking the building and bringing it with me. The money goes there. When that building makes me money and the money comes to me, that would be part of the capital account. Sorry, current account. Last important thing about the financial account. Financial flows in the financial account. Money that comes into our country makes its way into the loanable funds market. Okay, so if we have a financial account surplus, what do you think that's going to do to the loanable funds? That's going to increase the supply of loanable funds. Right, so net capital outflows, take a look at this. So net capital, net is the difference. Anytime we talk about net, this is the difference between foreign assets and domestic assets. Okay, if we have a financial account surplus, our inflow is greater than our outflow. We have more money coming in, capital, money, investment, than going out. A financial account deficit, we have more money going out than coming in, right? Let's look at how this happens, okay? Let's look at the United States. We have a interest rate of 6%, and let's say the equilibrium interest rate in the United Kingdom is 2%. Right? Well, people are going to want to invest in the United States. Right? So money is going to flow into the United States out of the United Kingdom. What's going to happen to supply of loanable funds in the United States? It's going to increase. It's going to shift to the right. This will create a new equilibrium interest rate of 4%. And what happens to the uh, supply of loanable funds in Great Britain? As money flows out of their financial markets, the supply decreases. That will raise the interest rate from 2 to 4. And then in with both countries, we have an equilibrium interest rate and capital money will stop flowing because there's no need for them to put money in America because they can earn the same return in Great Britain. So let's look at a few questions here. We're going to look at some transactions, and let's see, are they part of the current account, the financial account, or are they credit or debit? So Bill, an American, invests $20 million in a ski resort in Canada. Financial account, current account. Credit or debit? It's a financial account. It's a ski resort. It stays there, and it's a debit because money is leaving the United States. Let's look at another one. A Korean company sells vests 
to the U.S. military. Current account or financial account, credit or debit. It's current account and it's a debit. Vests are leaving Korea, coming to America, and what's going out? Money. We're paying money, so money is leaving, so that puts us into debt, and it's a debit on our books. U.S. company sells 2747s to France. Current account, financial account, credit, debit. Current account, credit. They're giving us money, and we are sending planes to France. Next, shopping mall in San Diego bought by a Chinese company. Financial account, current account. Financial account and credit. Money is coming in and the shopping mall, they're not picking it up and bringing it back to China. It is staying here. A legal immigrant living in the U.S. sends a portion of his earnings to his family in Bora Bora. Current account, financial account, credit, debit. Current account, it's money leaving and it's debit because it's money leaving. Next one, German investor buys U.S. Treasury bonds. We said stocks and bonds are financial account and it's a credit because money is coming in. And finally, Italian tourists spend $5 million while U.S. tourists spend $8 million. Are we spending more than they are? Yes, so it's a net debit and it is current because it's money leaving the country. Right, so hopefully you're starting to sort of get the picture here.